What's going on guys? It's Mike for Sim Racing 604 and welcome to part two of my Moza Racing steering wheel system review. We've already looked at the R9 wheelbase. You can check the link in the description to find out more about the wheelbase if you'd like. But today I'm looking at this GS steering wheel. It's a fantastic looking wheel uh, made of carbon fiber and uh, Alcantara. It's got dual clutches and I'm super excited to get this box opened up and have a deeper look at this wheel. Let's do that now. All right, guys. So as mentioned, this is sort of a part two of this video, and I've already taken a look at the R9 wheelbase. Now it's time to look at this GS steering wheel. As you can see from the box, it's a very cool looking GT style steering wheel. So uh, time to cut it and get it open. And I know the sort of chronology of the video is, is weird. I'm filming this before I actually uh, try out the wheelbase, but uh, decided to break this into two videos. So we will see how this works. So this should be just a simple lift off top, but great looking packaging, by the way. If you saw this on the shelves at your uh, local electronics store, this would be a head turner. Definitely. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Almost there. There we go. Let's see what was in the box. So we have a user manual and then all kinds of stickers that can go on our wheel so we can customize the buttons to our liking. And then we have the wheel itself. Less of a struggle to get out than that uh, R9 wheelbase, thankfully. Oh, something else in here. A little Allen key. Very nice packaging, by the way. This is a very soft interior to this box. I'm just gonna put this aside for now on top of the stickers. And woo, there it is. Wow. Great, great looking wheel. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. So where to start with this? Well, first thing, it's got a great weight to it. It feels solid without feeling bulky. Uh, the sizing is perfect. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll maybe grip it uh, in reverse, but uh, yeah, great spacing. We've got the paddles in the back. These two obviously would serve as a clutch. Hopefully I'll be able to set a bite point and a release. And then magnetic shifters. Ah, oh, those sound so sweet. Oh, got the excellent looking quick release on the back. Tagged Moza. Wow. And then these rotary dials here that we can do with our thumbs. Up and down, of course. And this, these are all backlit, by the way. So um, you guys will see that in the video in a second, I'm sure. Um, then we got all these dials in the middle. Uh, map, turbo, traction control, ABS, differential. And so there's just a huge amount of buttons we could map here. Don't know what this is. This might be a funky switch. Nope, doesn't rotate. So I don't know if this is analog, this little sort of joystick here. I don't know if this is analog or not. It feels like it would be. And we've got one on either side. They do not rotate, uh, but you can still uh, move those around. Hopefully this isn't throwing my focus off. But yeah, Moza Racing written across here. Again, carbon fiber. We've got all these buttons across the top. Uh, pit limiter, the, the usual buttons you would see, brake balance, ERS. I mean, this wheel is loaded and just looks tremendous, tremendous. Uh, there is plastic used in the back. These Alcantara grips just feel magic. And again, that carbon fiber on the back on those shifters oh man so inside here doubt you guys can see that but inside of this quick release we've got a little five pin connection system there and wow wow such a gorgeous looking wheel this thing man i don't think i own anything close to this nice looking and um yeah just tremendous Tremendous. Love the Alcantara. Love the carbon fiber. And this display here, by the way, this will be a, these will be tachometer lights, obviously. And uh, yeah, really good spacing on the shifters. I can get my fingers on it, no problem. I can use my pinkies or my ring fingers to work the clutch. And then uh, again, having trouble showing it to you guys, but uh, 
easily reach anything. Have to reach over, of course, for the dials, but uh, the rest of it easily within thumb reach. And um, just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful wheel. Really, really nice. And I, uh, I'm excited to get this mounted again. I'm doing this in a funny order. Uh, I haven't yet got the uh, wheelbase mounted, uh, but I wanted to do sort of a separate uh, unboxing for this wheel. So um, next steps, I'm going to get this on and I'm going to run through some customization, hopefully of these backlit buttons. And um, yeah, then we'll do some, some driving and see how I like this wheel. And I'm sure I will love it. So let's do that now. So let's first talk about the features of the Moza Racing GS steering wheel. This is a GT style steering wheel with a 300 millimeter diameter. It features Alcantara grips and a carbon fiber face. The included quick release mates with Moza Racing wheelbases and the two units transfer power and communication via wireless zero latency technology. There are 10 buttons on the GS steering wheel that can light up in eight different colors and these colors are individually configurable. In addition to the 10 buttons, the wheel also offers offers two thumb knobs, five rotary dials, two joysticks, two magnetic shift paddles, and two analog clutch paddles. The GS wheel utilizes in-game telemetry for its RGB tachometer bar. The wheel is intended to be used with Moza Racing wheelbases and the Moza Racing Pithouse software or free smartphone app can be used to customize various parameters of its operation. The Moza Racing GS steering wheel currently sells for $499 US dollars. All right, so I've got my R9 mounted, ready to put this GS wheel on. Of course, it's got the quick release, so it should be just a matter of lining up these ball bearings with uh, the depressions that are on the shaft. Boom, easy. Make sure you guys can see that. So it does its little startup sequence, and the... Uh, quick release is extremely solid. If you're seeing any movement, that is actually, wow, yeah, that's impressive. So that is actually the rig itself moving. So this, I don't want to push it too hard and snap something, but it's amazing. There's almost no movement. This, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but this shaft in here, incredibly strong. That's very, very impressive. And what the Moza Racing, uh, GS wheel allows you to do as far as colors on your wheel. If you hold down the brake balance and ERS buttons, that light will start to flash. And then when you press a button, you can change its color and you can cycle through. I think there's eight or nine different colors. Come on, you. There we go. Sometimes it <laughs> apparently takes a couple of presses, but it does allow you to change those colors. So very neat function. Then you just release those buttons and it goes back to normal. So yeah, yeah, very nice looking wheel. Um, if we go into the software here, you can see that it is detecting the rotation on my wheel perfectly. I've got it right now set up for uh, 540 degrees. So that means if I go Three quarters of the way around, it should stop. Yep, negative 270. Back the other way, plus 270. And back to center. If I decide for whatever reason that I want that to be my center, just click the center on the wheel. And then that is center, but I want it actually lined up to center. So I'll just click center once again, and that is my zero now. So super easy. Uh, let's see if we can adjust the rotation. So it should be 720, so this should go one full rotation either way. There we go. And there you are. So super easy. Again, I'll put it back to 540 because I want to be in GT mode. Let's quickly look at the configuration. You can either choose uh, the more button here or you can go into the wheel configuration. And um, let's take a look at what you can do. Uh, so the axis combine. Oh, okay, so you can see in the software as I push the buttons, it's coming up. Showing that everything is working. Nice. Great. Looks like it's all there. And uh, we can do various configurations of the buttons here. I'm going to say my clutch point is at 100%. Not sure 
why I would want it at 50%, but for now I'll keep it there. And then you can do customization of the engine RPM timing. Uh, in this case, I was just experimenting, and so it goes from green to red to purple. I actually think I like blue better, so I'm going to make these last stages blue. So now when I uh, hit peak RPMs, that's how it should come up. And if I'm not mistaken, it was this by default. It was purple, but uh, I'm going to switch it back to blue. Let's go all the way in on brightness of that screen. And uh, yeah, that should be good. So I'm going to save this. And there we go, should be. And there are little, uh, let's see, in this mode, the color of each light that comes on is not related to the other lights. Oh, that's interesting. So it, it's got all these little information points here and it's nicely spelled out what some of these customization options uh, can do. And I'm not gonna get into it all, but uh, again, just super impressed with this software. So we have our game launcher from the main screen. You can jump in there or you can boot into your game the standard way. So I think once again, I will go back to Assetto Corsa Competizione and uh, turn some laps there and uh, just give my impressions of using this wheel. All right, so we are here in Assetto Corsa Competizione and I've basically configured everything as you can see. The axis moving in the top left hand corner of the screen there seems to be working perfectly. I've got the left clutch paddle set up for my clutch and uh, as you would imagine my shifter is set up for shift up and shift down i've also done a couple of other consideration uh configurations rather uh, so this should be ignition starter uh, let's see do i have a pit limiter set up yet yep pit limiter is the pl button fl over here i've got light stages wiper um, something i haven't done yet is brake balance so let's configure that so increase brake bias, decrease brake bias. Okay, so that works perfectly. And then I can, let's say engine map. We can turn engine map up or down, which is kind of handy. So yeah, all right there. And what else should I configure? Let's say nothing now. So I should have my menu configuration set up. So this should be good. I'll save this as a configuration. And let's get out on track. All right, so here we are in the pits at Nürburgring GP on board the Ferrari. Let's go ahead and start the car. So this should be ignition. Whoops. There we go. All right. So we should be able to adjust our brake balance, which we can. That's great. And, uh, excuse me, engine mode. I don't know the Ferrari engine mode, so I'll leave it at six. And then we should be able to, let's see, go clutch in first gear. So nothing until I let out on the clutch. Works beautifully. Hopefully you guys can see the lights on my wheel. They seem to be spot on, even with the game. So yeah, great weight to the wheel. And the uh, rotation not aligning from the real world to the game, that's a known ACC thing. But yeah, if you guys remember in the software, I configured the uh, over rev or uh, uh, excuse me, tachometer limit to be blue, and you can see it's coming up blue, so that's great. So it goes green into red into blue. Whoa, 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 whoa! A little hot into that corner, worked out, but uh, yeah, I mean, buttons and lights notwithstanding, I mean, this is as good of a wheel as I've ever held in my hands. Um, just a phenomenal piece of equipment. Great weight to it. Feels extremely solid, especially with that uh, with that great quick release. That shaft is just a rock. I 
I know a lot of people are, are buying wheels with screens on them now, and that would absolutely be nice, but of course that's going to drive up the price. Um, it would be nice if there was a smaller screen here, possibly for a configuration and definitely for uh, a gear indicator, but uh, I think the intent for Moza is to, is to uh, guide people towards buying the screen. There's a screen you can buy in the Moza Racing ecosystem that will show you that gear. So it would be kind of redundant if you had that screen and then the, uh, the gear indicator on your wheel. So I kind of get where they're coming from from a marketing perspective there. Trying to guide people toward that, uh, that screen add-on. Yeah, the weight is tremendous, and uh, something else I like that uh, I haven't seen any of the other reviewers mention is the tachometer lights here are very, very bright. They uh, really get your attention, so when you're, you know, at the peak RPMs, or at the limit, rather, it gets a nice bright flash so you know, you know, to back off, change gears. That's something not present in, in, in all wheels, of course. But I, I absolutely love this. I love the quick release. I love the feel of the wheel. The ergonomics, by the way, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that corner, not so perfect. But the ergonomics are, are just absolutely perfect. You guys can hopefully see this in the video. But, like, my thumb easily, easily reaches. I can overreach these buttons. So, uh, just perfect setup. The paddles... It's so easy for me to reach them. The clutch, if I wanted it, I could easily uh, squeeze that clutch without having, you know, to move my hand at all. Uh, granted, you have to move your hand to turn the brake ba balance slash brake bias wheel or the ERS wheel, um, or of course these knobs in the center, but that's to be expected. But as far as you know, being able to reach a lot with your thumb. This game, or sorry, this wheel just absolutely nails it. The ergonomics are perfect. It's a comfortable wheel. It's nice and strong. And honestly, uh, could hardly be happier with it. Feels so great. All right, I've been talking the whole time. Let's see if I can get a little bit more out of this Moza Racing wheel. The clicks are very pronounced, I will say, in the magnetic shifting, uh, with the magnetic shifters, rather. Oh, I think I buried this lap on the first corner. Nope. Yeah, what a great feeling wheel. I'm, I'm strangling it right now, deliberately. Just trying to see if I can get any sort of wiggle, any sort of flex, and there is none. Just could hardly be stronger. Really, really nice wheel. Nice setup with the R9. And again, that force feedback detail, if you guys watch my R9 video, you know, I love, love, love the force feedback detail I get. And this wheel, of course, a perfect complement if you've got the money, and I'll get into more on that in my final thoughts. But yeah, if you're interested in the wheel, it's a perfect complement to this R9 base. But yeah, this GS wheel, couldn't be happier with it. Great weight, great feel, nice and strong. Great ergonomics. In many ways, it's everything you would look for in a sim racing wheel. Really fantastic. It's not how you take that chicane, but that's all right. Love it. Love it. Could hardly be happier with this. All right, guys, let's get into my final thoughts on the Moza Racing GS wheel. All right, so final thoughts on the Moza Racing GS steering wheel. Um, I've had 
a lot of time in game with this already and uh yeah super impressed by this gs steering wheel along with the r9 wheelbase uh so let's talk about the pros and cons of this gs steering wheel uh, i'll start with the pros first thing it's gorgeous I love the looks of this wheel and of course looks are something that's subjective. I'm sure a lot of people look at this and think it's hideous. For me, I could hardly be more excited. Um, I do a lot of reviews on this channel or, or quite a few reviews, I'll say that. And uh, this is one of the few where I've had to go upstairs and talk to my wife and be like, honey, wait till you see this thing. She wasn't as impressed, but uh, she still, still thought it was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I just can't get over the looks of this. I think it's a great, great looking wheel. And uh, next thing, far more important than looks, is the ergonomics. So it's hard to show you guys in the video, or sorry, in, in this format, but hopefully you saw it in the video, is that I can easily reach everything, all these buttons with my thumb. It's nothing to just reach up and rotate this dial and, uh, you know, reaching over for these... Uh, uh, dials in the middle of course you would expect but the rest of the time you're just going to stay here you can easily reach the shift the clutch whatever and um yeah it's just really well laid out and the ergonomics are a big big thing in wheels of course and uh, this one has it nailed it's it's tremendous ergonomics you don't feel like you're reaching for anything so extremely well done and uh related to that the button and dial assortment and paddles actually um huge amount here of course there's no limit to you know what you could actually get in uh buttons and dials uh everyone's going to be different but for me it has more than enough dials more than enough buttons and uh, of course these paddles on the back nicely done we have magnetic shifters and then we got the two, you'd probably say clutch paddles um, to, uh, to, to finish it off. So just a huge amount of buttons, dials, paddles uh, to get you going. More than enough to customize your favorite sim. So uh, really nicely done there. And also it feels strong. There's no flex in this. You know, there is plastic. There's a lot of plastic on the back. There's a bit of plastic visible from the front down here, um, but it's still just a rock. There's no twist in this wheel whatsoever. It's got a good weight to it and overall just a very nice feeling wheel. Uh, great weight, very solid. You know, that's exactly what you should uh, expect from a, a racing wheel. Uh, this tachometer bar here, it's nice and bright. I love that. So when I'm driving in the sim and it's flashing, telling me to change gear, uh, I notice it is not something that's subtle. The G29, love that wheel. But the tachometer lights are very subtle. You don't really notice them, especially if you're in the midst of a race. This one really flashes at you quite strongly and uh, great to have for sure. Next one. Quick release. It's excellent. This is part and parcel with the R9 wheelbase that I got and uh, you just push it in, click, done. No screwing anything, no messing around. It just, as long as you've got those ball bearings lined up, it just bang, snaps into place. It feels nice and strong. And uh, this in combination with the shaft, I mean, there's no flex whatsoever between the wheel and wheelbase. And um, so moving on to the cons now and these buttons nicely light up. But the problem is you can only customize it on the wheel. So you have to press these two buttons in here, these rotary dials rather, and then you can change the color on your wheel. But it would be nice. The Pit House software is excellent otherwise, but for some reason you can't customize the button color. So unfortunately that's a bit of a letdown. Uh, having all the uh, multiple different colors you can, begin, you can make your buttons is great, but not being able to do it through the Pit House software is a bit of a letdown. Uh, next one, the clutch paddle. I don't know if you guys can see that or not but it's a pretty short throw and I think that might be off-putting to some people depending on how much you actually use your clutch paddle but uh, it's a comparatively short throw the the action is good it's nice and smooth but unfortunately it's not very long so if you're trying to get those you know exact moments of uh, you know release of the clutch to get the car rolling it might be a little bit hard to find with a clutch throw being this short and then I've seen other reviewers talking about this as well. The backlighting on the buttons isn't great. You've got all different colors, which is awesome, but it, they're not very bright. So uh, it's not really going to matter. But if you're the type of person that likes to have the sort of ambiance of 
driving in the dark and got this super bright light in front of a bright wheel rather in front of you uh this might be a bit of a letdown and the last one there's no screen here and i hesitated to put this in the cons category uh because i know moza racing does offer a uh what would you call it a little mini screen um that sits right about here on top of your wheel vase that will show you the gear um, but it does feel kind of weird if you don't own that screen to not have any gear indicator because you've got these great tachometer leds here um, but then when you shift gear you have to look at your hud in game to know what gear you're in and uh, it's a bit of a letdown but again i understand what they're doing because it would be totally redundant if you bought the screen so yeah is it a con i don't actually know so that's my thoughts on the uh, Moza Racing uh, GS steering wheel. It's beautiful. I love it. It's it's strong. It's got a huge assortment of buttons. Uh, one of the best I own, honestly. It's it's so strong. All the action on the buttons feels very nice. Um, it's it's got backlighting if you're into that. It's got the great quick release. It's got the magnetic shift paddles. I mean, there's just a tremendous amount of features going on here in this GS steering wheel, and I, I love it. I, I think it's it's really really great. Uh, the price is. I'm going to say right about where it needs to be. I know a lot of people are going with GSI wheels and stuff like that with the uh, big screen on board that's, you know, uh, and brighter lights, but uh, that's a whole different price point. So for this price point, $500 range, getting the uh, clutch paddles, getting the magnetic shifters and having all of the other features, the carbon fiber, the Alcantara grips, um, I think think it's priced right about where it needs to be at the $500 price point. Unfortunately, and I talked about this in my R9 video, they didn't come out with an entry level wheel yet. So I think that's going to hold back sales. But uh, if you're looking for a wheel like this uh, to complement the R9 wheelbase, I highly recommend it. Tremendous wheel and a great wheelbase as well. And uh, very happy with uh, how this how this performs. So excellent wheel. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, we will see you next time.